Okay, so you've got these handy dandy actions that Andrew sent you, and you're saying, well those are great, but what the heck do I do with them? Well, it's pretty easy. We'll go into Photoshop here, and we'll make sure you have the right palette up. That's going to be the actions palette. Your mileage may vary depending on what version of Photoshop you're running. Well, we're going to turn this one on, and I'm going to bring it right out here to the center so you can see it real good. I'm going to size it a little bit, and we're going to go right up here to this little button off in the upper right hand corner, and open it here, and you see I have lots of options that apply to the palettes, and we're going to load actions. We're going to select where they're from, so wherever you save this action that I send you, which is the standard wedding edit.atn, which is an Adobe Actions file, you're just going to choose it. Mine happens to be on the desktop, which is default there, so I'm just going to choose it real easy and load. And bam, just like that, you're going to have all these really cool actions to choose from. They're pulled from a few different places. Some of them I've paid for, some of them I've actually come up with myself. Uh, the black and white here, really nice. It actually uses uh, uh, a graduated filter to make the uh, levels. It uses a gradation. Uh, modern antique actually reduces your color down, makes a real nice uh, sort of an antique -y kind of a look. Hot fudge sounds delicious, gives you that brown tone. We have uh, that modern antique with a glow applied to it as well. Lord of the Rings, which gives you a really dramatic, glowy, uh, sort of a uh, hard highlight kind of an effect. Hot fudge with a cherry. Gives you a red effect in there with that hot fudge as well. It's pretty cool. Angel glow, just a real nice glow. These are the cross-processing actions right here. We have a real green one, a real blue one, and one that's sort of cyan. I usually tend to go with the cyan version. It gives me sort of that neat sort of in-betweeny, greeny, bluey. Looks really close to what actual cross-processed film looks like. And then we have a couple here. We have a blur and a zoom and a vignette with layers. This one, if you're going to use it, takes a little preparation. You're going to want to open all of the files that you want to apply it to ahead of time and actually use the lasso tool to select the area you want to have inside of your vignette and then run this action on them to produce the vignette. It's a real subtle kind of a vignette. It's that real cloudy kind of outside um, it actually blurs the outside a little bit and darkens it. And this one, Prep for Colorization, uh, it actually just applies a couple layers to your file that I always use for colorization. And one of those is the black and white, and then there's a levels adjustment on top of that black and white, which I then use uh, masking to mask out the colorized areas. So it gives me a way to batch some colorization a little bit more batching in it. That way it's a little bit easier for me to tackle doing the colorization to a bunch of files. And that's pretty well it. It's a pretty, well, it's a pretty easy thing to do. And uh, if you have any trouble or anything, just email me or give me a call. I'm not sure what version of Photoshop you're running or if you're running the full version, the light version. And that will probably change uh, what kind of options you have. So like I said, your mileage may vary. If you have any questions or problems, just give me a call.